there are a couple of things that bore me to death in the fitness industry. One of them is the idea that once you go over 15% body fat, everything turns to shit and bulking becomes ineffective and you just store more fat. The other one would be myth busting over things to audiences that don't actually believe that thing to be true, i.e. creating an echo chamber. Folks, I have an important announcement to make today for the one millionth time. Sugar is not the single cause of obesity. Excess calorie consumption is. Oh, oh my God, I'm getting so many likes. And the third one would be giving people scientific guides on how if someone's fat-free mass index is over 25, then that person is almost certainly on drugs. And since I haven't talked about this letter concept, I'm going to address this in this video. The first thing I want to say is that for someone like myself, the idea that over an FFMI of 25, you must be on drugs is actually a very pleasant thought. I myself have been training pretty seriously for a number of years now and still have an FFMI of about 22 point something. So the idea that if someone is considerably bigger than myself has to be on drugs is a very appealing thought. But unfortunately, it would take someone pretty ignorant to actually believe that. But since a lot of people tend to be very ignorant about this topic, I think it's a good idea to talk about this. Given how frequently of FFMI of 25 as an upper limit of natural muscularity is being referenced, you would think that this is based on a lot of studies and a lot of thorough examination, and as a result of all of this, we came to this conclusion. But the reality is, is that this has all been based on one single study in 1995. In this study, a group of researchers have gathered 157 people, 74 of whom were natural, and the rest were drug-using athletes or have been using drugs in the past. And yes, at the end of this study, the researchers have reported that the highest FFMI that they found in the natural group was less than 25, whereas in the drug-using group, they have found people who had FFMIs that were considerably higher than that. I should note that this same study have looked at the FFMIs of previous bodybuilders who were from the non-steroid era, and you would have to be some serious conspiracy theorist to believe that they were using steroids, and the highest FFMI that they found in that sample was 28. But for the sake of this discussion, let's just ignore that letter data, and let's assume that those people already could have used steroids in some way which we just don't understand at the moment. You don't have to be an evidence-based thinker to intuitively know that one single study is rarely the final word on anything, especially if we want to examine something so broad as the upper natural limit of a given human physiological trait, such as the amount of muscle that someone can carry. But in the case of natural muscularity, this is exactly what the internet community has done. They just took the results of the study, ran with that, and now they use this as justification to accuse anybody of being a fake natural. I want to reiterate something that Greg Knuckles said in an article that I'm going to link in the show notes below. If you wanted to conduct a study on how tall a human being can get and you wanted to have the final word on, okay, this is as tall as someone can grow over this limit. If someone is taller than this, then the person either had limb lengthening surgery or the person is standing on an invisible chair and there's just no way that someone can get this tall. What would you do? Well, one way you could go about it is say, okay, what is one place where a lot of tall people tend to congregate at any one time? For example, a professional basketball league, right? You could go to the NBA, recruit a lot of current and ex-professional basketball players, and analyze their height. And sure enough, you would see a lot of guys that are over seven feet tall. I actually looked it up on Wikipedia. The tallest NBA player to date was a Romanian guy. He was seven foot seven, so 231 centimeter. So you would see guys like that, and based on that, you would conclude, okay, seven foot seven is the tallest a human being can get. And that would kind of make intuitive sense, right? I mean, I've never seen a person that tall myself. Odds are you haven't either. But probably all of us had at least one classmate in high school or in college who was six foot six or six foot seven. I mean, this basketball player guy would make that guy look like a midget. So it's kind of logical that that is as tall as a human being can get. Well, the truth is the tallest person whose height was ever recorded to date was Robert Wadlow, who was eight foot 11, so 272 centimeters. He had nothing to do with pro basketball. He was just an extreme genetic anomaly. And he would look like this Romanian basketball player look like a midget. So similarly, in the case of natural muscularity, is it true that if someone has an FFMI of over 25, that it's likely that they are on drugs? Yes. But can we rule out the possibility that there is someone out there who has an FFMI of 28? No. Basically, here is how this works. The higher someone's FFMI is deviating from the average, the less likely it is that the person is natural. Basically, if you go into any given gym, the average fit guy that you're going to see there will have an FFMI of between 20 and 22. 
people with an FFMI of 23 will be more rare than people with an FFMI of 22, and then 24 will be even more rare than someone with 23. If someone has an FFMI of 24, that means that the person is either super genetically gifted or that they have been training for a really long time, really intelligently and really consistently, both of which occurrences are pretty rare. But getting back to the height example, if you go out clubbing one night and you go into any random crowded place, odds are that you will see people from a height of 160 centimeters all the way to 190. But every once in a while, you will see a head towering above everyone else's, even though that person will not be standing on a chair. And every once in a while, you will see a really, really tiny person, even though the person didn't dig a hole in the middle of the club, they are just that tiny. And guys, as much as that sucks to hear, people just have different genetics. This is something that people just seem to not want to acknowledge. Everybody thinks that, okay, sure, genetics matter, but at the end of the day, if we put on similar amounts of work, we will all end up at the same result. No, when it comes to how big and strong you can get, the influence of genetics is enormous. I personally have never known people that I would call true genetic freaks, but I have known some people that if they dedicated some serious length of time to serious strength training, they could have an FFMI of over 25 and even potentially 26. The example closest to me that I can give you is my brother. I'm not gonna put up any picture of him because of privacy reasons, but my brother and I are the same height. He has always been 10 kilograms or 22 pounds heavier than I was at similar body fat percentages. A lot of this probably just comes down to bone density. I myself have never been a really big boned guy, whereas he was. But also, my brother never actually lifted weights. He was swimming competitively up until the age of about 10. After that, he may have been in a gym five times in his entire life. My brother, despite all of this, looked like he worked out seriously his entire life. He could take his shirt off at any beach. Everybody would think that this guy is clearly working out. I myself, after putting about seven years into strength training, maybe now could stand next to him and look remotely as fit as he is. He has been at 100 kilos or 220 pounds before. He basically looked like I do now at 90 kilos. Pretty muscular, pretty fit, not exactly lean, but you also wouldn't say that this guy is out of shape. If I went up to 100 kilos now, it would not be pretty. I would be overweight to say the least and probably skimming low scale obesity. This is just what God gave him. And if he was to get into training for hypertrophy seriously, I would expect him to have an FFMI of over 25. The other example I would give is a guy that was a classmate of mine in high school. He took up lifting at the last year of high school. He always had a bit of a stocky kind of stacked build. He was a little bit shorter than me. He was 5'11". By the end of that year in high school, he was 90 kilos with abs. Okay, he probably had good body fat distribution. I don't think he was 10% body fat, but I also don't think that he was more than 15% body fat. And this guy looked jacked after one year of dedicated training. If he was to continue that for a couple more years, I would again expect his FFMI to be over 25 for sure. And then lastly, if you think of someone like Ronnie Coleman, who stepped on the bodybuilding stage almost at 300 pounds. Sure, did he use all the drugs in the world? Of course he did. But how big do you think Ronnie Coleman would be if he never used any drugs? If your guess is that he would be 180 pounds, so that would roughly put him at an FFMI of 25, there is just no way. I would think that in a couple of years, if I manage to stay injury free, I can get to an FFMI of about 24. If you think that a drug free Ronnie Coleman and myself are only separated by a couple of pounds, I'm sorry, no. I'm also fond of myself, but no way. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm also not advocating for being naive and not using any common sense. When I'm looking at people on the Mr. Olympia stage, I'm also not sitting there thinking, hmm, look at all these guys that are all probably natural, just have incredible genetics. No, most certainly every single one of those guys are on drugs. Even if some of those had such genetics that they could somehow possibly stand there without drugs, even then, most certainly they would still use drugs. For these people, fitness is not just a hobby or an athletic outlet. No, these are competitive professionals. This is their career. So they are not going to leave any stones unturned. Also, we can, of course, use some common sense in some less extreme scenarios. For example, in my gym, I saw multiple guys coming in looking like Superman on one day, and then a few weeks later, they came in looking like shriveled up little boys, because probably that's where they came off their cycle. So in this gym, if I see another guy who's coming in looking huge and shredded, my first assumption is not going to be that, hmm, this is probably another guy with incredible genetics who is natural. But what's important to keep in mind when you're just looking at random people on the internet that are borderline in terms of their muscularity being achievable naturally is that even if only 1% of the people will have an FFMI of over 25, that still means that if millions of people are lifting weights around the world, which there are, 
then thousands of people are going to have an FFMI of over 25. And what I would recommend is when you see a guy on Instagram who has a crazy impressive physique and you're suspecting that he's using drugs, first ask yourself, do I think that this person is using drugs because he just looks too good to be believable? Because that can have a lot to do with simply proportions, muscle insertions, muscle bellies, bone structure, none of which are influenced by drug use. I will admit the first time I saw Matt Ogus, my first reaction was, there is no way this guy is natural. I knew that Eric Helms was coaching him. I thought, did Eric lose his mind? How can he claim that this guy is natural? But the truth is, the reason why I thought that with my novice eyes is because Matt Ogus has crazy muscle bellies, super symmetrical muscle insertions, and all of this just makes him look like a superhero, like an action man figure. I spoke to multiple people who have seen Matt Ogus in person, and all of them said that Matt in person is actually a tiny guy. He just has these crazy muscle bellies which make him look so aesthetic. The other thing is, if someone looks too big to be true, the first question to ask yourself is, could this person be natural still if he was just really, really genetically gifted? In the case of Phil Heath on stage, the answer is most certainly no, but in the case of Lane Norton or Jeff Nippard, the answer is most certainly yes. So guys, obviously use common sense. There are certain levels of muscularity that are just simply not achievable, but simply someone's FFMI being over 25 is not only not proof that he's not natural, it also doesn't make it extremely unlikely that he's natural. It simply means that statistically speaking, it is unlikely that he's natural because by definition, most people's genetics are average and people with average genetics will not have an FFMI over 25. But just like every once in a while, you will come across a guy who is over six foot eight, you might well see a guy every once in a while who has a really high natural muscularity. So this is all I had to say today. I hope you found this video interesting. Hopefully it was helpful and put some things into perspective. If you did enjoy it, drop a like. Let me know what you think in the comment section. If you don't agree, of course, let me know. We can argue whatever you can troll me, I'll troll you back. Subscribe for more content like this. And with that, see you next time.